workbooks get a whole lot of flack in the homeschool world for sucking the joy out of learning. But not all of them should be tossed in the trash. Hi, I am Rachel from the Seven and All family, and today I'm going to be here talking to you about workbooks. I am a second generation homeschooler just beginning the journey of raising my own sons in a bilingual homeschool lifestyle and I love to be here talking about homeschool, chatting with you in the comments. So please subscribe to my channel down below if you like these kind of videos and give me a like, give me a comment. I'd love to build this community even more with you. Let's talk about workbooks. Today I'm going to talk about some pitfalls with using workbooks and also the benefits that workbooks can have when they are used well. I'm also going to be sharing some of my top workbook series, my favorite go-to brands when I am looking for a workbook. So let's get started. If workbooks have been a total fail in your homeschool, these might be the reasons why. Number one, are you using poorly written workbooks? You know, you see a workbook for sale. You don't know any better, all you see is the cover, and so you buy it, you're like, hey, I have a great grade level workbook for my kid. And it's a preschool level numbers workbook, and you turn to, you know, this page, you know, this is supposed to be a teaching the numbers one through 20. That's what a preschooler should learn to do, that's great. But you turn to the page and it says, write the number 17, but it's not one seven, it's S-E-V-E-N, you know, spelling out the whole number 17, like 10 times on a worksheet page and that is the worksheet in a preschool level numbers workbook. This is not a myth. I have seen that exact page in a very affordably priced numbers workbook for preschool. I have seen other just terribly designed worksheets. I sometimes wonder if these workbooks might have been designed and made by people who have never met children before or never worked in education before because yeah, a badly designed workbook, that could be your problem. I, I've seen dot to dots for up to and over 50 in preschool level workbooks. So there is a problem. <laughs> there is a problem with workbooks that are not well designed, not with an age appropriate level of activities. Um, so that could be a problem if you've tried workbooks and you've been like, this is the worst. They're not all like that. So get rid of the bad workbooks, do a little bit of double checking and flipping through the pages and thinking, would this actually work and make sense for my child at this level before you buy the workbook so that you don't waste any more of your hard earned money. That's my kind of first point and first tip based off of that. Number two, if you're finding that workbooks are a total fail and they're stealing the joy of your homeschool, maybe you are using them wrong or in the wrong quantity. Now let me explain this. Workbooks are an excellent tool for homeschoolers, but workbooks should not be used to primarily teach new and complex information to your kids. Um, there's a reason, you know, schools have teachers. There's a reason that homeschools have parents leading and teaching these um, big concepts, these major concepts. Don't just buy a first grade math workbook from the grocery store and be like, okay, here's your math curriculum, read it and learn everything. That's <laughs> probably not going to get the job done to the most adequate way that we should be educating our kids. In addition, sometimes we go a little bit workbook crazy and we end up buying, okay, here's 10 workbooks to work on 10 different tiny elements of something that you should know for your child. And then your child ends up feeling like, oh, I just have to finish this whole stack or I have to check all of these off the list. And they focus more on getting them all done than on learning anything or on doing them well. That can be a problem. <laughs> In that case, I would recommend scale back. Think about what does your child really need a little bit of extra practice on? Pick out a couple of workbooks to tackle those core skills that you are really focusing on during this season of their homeschool career and get rid of the rest. Don't overdo it. Pick a few and do those few thoroughly and well. Um, but to go back to what I was saying that workbooks are not really meant to be the core of your homeschool day. They're not meant to be the main thing that's teaching your kids these big concepts that are going to prepare them for life and for work in this world. They're just 
they're just a workbook. <laughs> you don't expect too much of them. What are they good for if they're not good for that? Um, number one, in the early years, workbooks are very good for building basic pencil skills, scissor skills, these little fine motor skills with sitting, you know, sitting down, having some fun with paper, but also getting some quality time with mom and um, building vocabulary. I found that they are very good for building vocabulary as well. Because yes, our kids absolutely should be building their motor skills through playing outside in the dirt and you know doing um, strength bu strength building activities. That is very important. But if we do five minutes of sitting down with mommy and cutting up uh, a piece of paper or doing some gluing or doing some stickers, we are not preventing our young children from doing strength building activities and play. It's not an either or scenario. This is a great opportunity to just kind of have some calm time in your day, which I'm a mom of two young boys. Calm time in our day, a little bit of quietness, a few moments to you know, regroup, sit down at the table after a whole lot of chaos and running around is a very important part of our routine. So they can be really good, workbooks can be really good in the early years for these purposes of, you know, just, just some calm sit down time, some time with mommy, building vocabulary through talking, at, talking about, pointing out all the things on the page, and building those little motor skills that are important for school later on. Then, as your children get older, once you get past the reading step, like once your child can read independently, that's when workbooks become a tool that they can use independently. Do not be expecting a homeschool child to use workbooks for independent work until they can read. They have to be able to read <laughs> to use a workbook um, properly. But once they can read, then you can assign just a couple of targeted workbooks. And here I would say the purpose of workbooks is to have some extra practice or just to expand and build off of skills that they already have rather than trying to introduce totally new, new skills. Additionally, you could also use a workbook to cover a topic that you're like, this year I'm not really gonna do a full you know, geography curriculum or I'm not gonna do a full insert subject here curriculum for something that's maybe not super core but it is something that should be learned then you can use a workbook to, hey, at least my child's being exposed to some of these concepts, building vocabulary and skills that we can expand on later on. Um, so it's not totally being ignored this year, but I just simply don't have time in my day to accomplish this subject in full for this season. Um, but a little workbook that is fun, that is well-designed, will help them to be able to touch on this subject uh, on their own and independently. One of the great benefits of kids doing independent work is that they are learning to read the instructions on a page and then follow those instructions. Um, after your child completes a workbook, I always recommend going in and checking their work and talking with them over what they learned if they did it independently. That is a very important step in the process to getting the most out of your workbook, so don't forget uh, that step. But this is such an important opportunity because Mommy won't always be around to read the instructions to you and then translate the instructions into something that you understand. And a lot of kids can have a hard time making that leap from being able to read instructions on whatever they're supposed to do and then follow those instructions. That can be hard and workbooks, independent workbooks, give them a great opportunity to do that. I'm going to share with you a couple of brands that have been my go-to's for workbooks. Um, and I'll, they are for multiple different grade levels. I'm gonna start with the earliest ones for youngest kids and then I'm gonna work up from there. Now this is a workbook series I have shared about on the channel before, but I just rebought the series for my second son. And you know, when you actually rebuy something to use it with another kid, you know it must've been pretty good. <laughs> so I did wanna reshare these with you. These are from the Kumon brand. And so this is the overall brand I'm suggesting that you look at. But I will say some, some of the, I feel like once the Kumon books get older, into the higher levels, they turn into more of just like kind of repetitive and boring drill worksheets. Like just, you know, here's a page of 20 math problems, do it. So I'm not necessarily recommending them for all grade levels, but their early books are fantastic. This series, is for two years old. You can kind of see a little map on the back here if it shows. We have Let's Color, Let's Fold, 
Let's cut paper and let's sticker and, sticker and paste in the whole series. And these are just fantastic for little motor skills activities and vocabulary building. So I'm able to use Spanish words to just narrate and talk about whatever we're seeing on the page. Here we're adding little stickers that are covering up a certain part of the animal in different shapes. We can talk about the shape, we can name the animal, we can talk about the colors that we see. So it's one simple page we might do in a day, but there is a lot of opportunity to use it uh, for good. And it's a, my son absolutely loves these. I'm trying to limit him to one page in each book per day. But here is just very non-overwhelming opportunities to color. Just a little bit, you know, and we talk about color, color identification, and he gets to kind of color just a small area. Oh, and we have orange on our green cucumber, you know? You know, we, we have a little bit of artistic interpretation at times. Uh, then we have cut, cutting paper, which yes, you can give your two-year-old a piece of blank paper and let them chop it into a million tiny pieces. I do that pretty much every single day. And then sweep up the million tiny pieces. But this is a great opportunity for them to practice cutting on a line. Oh, this is gonna be a fun one. We get to cut on a line, cut out the pieces of pizza, and then put the pizza together or we cut off the lid and then we're able to put the lid onto the popcorn and take it off to see the popcorn flying out. This is, has a toast coming out of the toaster. I remember doing this book with my older son and it, they love the cutting paper one because there's always some kind of action you can do with it. And I think his other favorite was let's fold. So when we fold, we're able to put the bear into bed because we're folding up a blanket on the bear. Or here we're making a sailboat there's different, just like different little scenes, you can make the animals do different things, make a different picture. Some of them are kind of two-sided, so you're getting different elements. But folding is a great skill and a challenging one for a toddler, folding on a line. So this is gonna make the apple look like it has a bite out of it once you fold it. Then Kumon, we do have some of the older Kumon books. I think they do best with their sticker books. So like this is something, you know, at kindergarten, I'll use this in kindergarten with my older son, and at kindergarten I'm not gonna do a full geography course, but here's a little sticker opportunity for us to look into different nations, or different um, continents around the world, start building some vocabulary, just, uh, it's a little conversation starter for us. Just see some cool pictures, look at some we can, you know, always go on rabbit trails based off of this to look at some of these different landforms and landmarks. And this is one that he's doing right now because he's obsessed with mazes. And his favorite way to do a maze is to go down every single wrong direction and then say, oh, I'm trapped, I'm stuck, I gotta go the other way. So I'm not really sure that that's how you're supposed to do mazes, but that's how he, that's how he does mazes. This is also, this is the second time I have purchased books from the Montessori Method workbook series and these are also sticker activity books. There's, uh, I don't know, maybe eight books or so in the series. And these are, I would say, a step up from the two-year-old Kumon books. They are also still very gentle. There's just a lot of cutouts and stickers, but it introduces just fun ideas. Okay, we've got footprints of different animals, counting the woodpecker holes in trees tails on different animals, matching an animal to their missing tail. Uh, a little bit of cutting out a bear. Just really, really just simple and fun and uh, opportunity to build vocabulary. Now we're moving beyond preschool. For the older kids, Worldly, Worldly Wise 3000 is a fantastic series for vocabulary building. This is, it is all totally focused on vocabulary. You can get one for any grade level. I've got book two and book 12 here to show you, just as an example. Um, but one word of warning, I wanna say, book one, um, grade one and kindergarten level of Worldly Wise are not at all the same as this series. They are not just a simple workbook. They are kind of really complicated with a lot of vocabulary cards and a teacher's book and it's, it's totally different, so just be aware of that and probably if you're looking for an easy workbook, just start at level two at that time. So I'll give you an example of what, just a quick flip through and look inside. 
So here in the level two, we have our vocabulary words here with multiple definitions when there are multiple definitions. I, it's, we have little actions suggested what you should do about it and there might be pictures. Then there are multiple activities working on the same set of words. So basically throughout one week, you're gonna be working on the same set of words. At the end of the week, you read a short story or just piece of writing that includes all those words. And then you're supposed to answer each question with a sentence. There's usually an extension activity at the end. And then there's might be some review kind of puzzle thing after that. And then you get to level two, lesson two. So you basically do one list each week, typically. I will show you the level 12 so you can see just how it levels up. But of course, this is a pretty big jump in level. Here we have our level 12 words. Ooh, delightful words. Coalesce, acolyte, covert, delineate, demagogue. See, doesn't this make you want to take, uh, use all these super fun words with your high schooler? We have multiple opportunities to practice using the words, practice feeling whether you can understand them. And the activities usually culminate in a more challenging activity at the end of the week, which is reading the passage, answering questions, they've got fun facts. Here, I don't think they do reviews every week, but like after three or four lessons, then they'll do a bigger review puzzle. So we might have something like a, like this kind of puzzle right here, crossword puzzle. That's Worldly Wise. Editor-in-Chief is another series that I highly recommend. This is level three. I believe that there are five levels. So I'm showing you a fairly advanced level, but I'm just gonna show you what to expect, what it contains. There will be a short reading just one page and then it says find the 13 errors in this passage so it will tell the student how many errors are in a passage and they need to go through and act just like an editor they and this is the part I think is really fun for kids that they're they're kind of told you're the teacher you're the editor you're the one who has to find all the mistakes so they're kind of getting to do what their parent does normally they go through and they mark and find all the mistakes if you can't find any Oh, and they also give a little warning where there are no errors, because sometimes there are factual errors. Then you go to the back, they actually do a whole, they will tell, okay, this, is, this was the thing that was wrong, and they tell you why it's wrong, and then they give you a little reference right here. And then you can go into this part, and they actually include in the workbook all these reasons, you know, all these reasons why certain mistakes were wrong, which is super, super valuable. So that's why this workbook really, to me, goes above and beyond that. It doesn't just tell you, oh, you were supposed to mark this wrong, you were supposed to mark this wrong, but it tells you um, what's wrong with, it, what was wrong with that number three. It was metal, metal was spelled wrong. And then it gives you more information about whatever the error was and that's just in the back of the book. So highly recommend this, just pick the level that is fitting for your child. This level three is pretty challenging and definitely something I would use with a high schooler. Um, and that's what it is supposed to be used for. Now, the big name in workbooks that I haven't mentioned here is Evan Moore. And the, really the only reason I can't really say for sure whether I recommend it or not is because they aren't super easy. That's one of the publishers that just isn't really locally av available here. And I think it's only been within the past handful of years or so that they've really expanded their ebook offerings. And we just haven't had kids really at the right level of need for the Evan Moore offerings. So um, I don't have much experience with them personally, but I do want to send you a link down below to Yasmin, um, Mommy on the Move and her channel and her video about Evan Moore and why she loves their workbook so much and how, kind of her tips on using Evan Moore workbooks in your homeschool uh, because I do know that they are a resource that a lot of homeschoolers really like and recommend. I have heard very good things about their history pockets in particular and a lot of people really love their spelling as well as, as a spelling curriculum. So that's another one to look into. Go ahead and leave me down in the comments below some of your all-time favorite workbooks or 
also leave this so we can all grumble together. If you have come across any really ridiculous workbook page assignments, like what I described spelling 17 10 times in a preschool workbook, if you have come across kind of ridiculous things like that, let me know. I'd love to hear your stories. All right, I'll see you next time. Thank you.